The Lord's been good to me, oh, down through the years. The Lord's been good to me, down through the years. The Lord's been good to me, you know the Lord, he's been good, good to me. testimony. God is so good and God is so mindful. He's good to the just and the unjust. He's good to the saved and the unsaved. He makes his sun to shine on those that are worthy of him and those that are not. God is certainly good to each and every one of us. And he, not only that, he gives us an opportunity. He gives us chances. He gives us all that we need. The Bible says that he literally has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So as we get ready to go uh, before the Lord in prayer to start our, our Bible study, we want you to share this link with your friends and your family and those that uh, you know. Share it so they can come online because we certainly do have a word from the Lord. And I thank God that uh, he does give us a word. He gives us a word uh, that we can be reconciled unto him. He gives us a word that we, we can be strong in him. He gives us a word that we can uh, examine ourselves, evaluate ourselves, and see whether or not we're in the faith. So it's good. It's good to, uh, to tune in to Bible study. It's good to give all that you have unto the Lord so that the Lord may be able to feed your heart, to feed your mind and your spirit. And we certainly do thank God for this great production of Christian ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, uh, a church that is literally pursuing excellence until excellence is achieved. Forgetting those things that are behind and pressing, we're supposed to be pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And as you're tuning in, um, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer. Well, I am the, the bishop of the church, Frank Quinn, 
the lead pastor, and we certainly do thank God for all of our ministers and all of our lay persons that work with us and our deacons, and we thank God for our lovely wife, Lady Tracy Quinn. So as we prepare our hearts and our minds and our spirit to go into Bible study on today, uh, we certainly do want you to remember uh, men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Let it be our prayer, O oh, gracious Father, in the mercies and the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We come before you to say thank you and praise you for your greatness and your mercy. How you've kept us all day long and watched over us even unto this very hour. And Lord, it is you, it is you that has given us strength. It is you that has put love in our hearts. It is you, Lord, that keeps us moving forward that we might attain unto the things that pertain unto life and godliness. Lord, we thank you that you have called us to walk by faith and not by sight, that we might receive of your greatness and receive of your goodness. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul that is tuning in on this night. We ask you, Lord, that you grant a word of faith, grant a word of knowledge, grant a word of understanding that it may be received with meekness to the saving of the soul. Lord, I pray, Lord, that if there's any questions that uh, individuals may have as they're tuning in, that, that you answer them on today. Lord, use your servant as we humble ourselves beneath thy mighty hand. We pray, Lord, that you strengthen us, strengthen us, strengthen us, the body of Christ, that we, Lord, do that which you have called us to do without fear, without trembling. We ask you, Lord, that you give us a heart and a mind to serve you uh, in the beauty of holiness in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that you remember those that are sick in their bodies, that are needing deliverance. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you'll send a great deliverance in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would send great authority and power in the hearts of those that need strength and authority in their spirit and their soul. We pray, Lord, uh, that you send healing to those that need healing, that you send comfort to all those that are comfortless, that those that are grieving, Lord, we pray. In the precious and the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you bless our Bible study on this, this evening, that you send forth a word Hallelujah, Lord. We ask you to bless us. Bless us, Lord, as we need you. We count on thee. Ah, Lord, we need you to guide us. Let your Holy Ghost, let the Spirit of God, let it rest, rule, and abide. Father, we thank you. Hey, glory. Give you great glory and honor and all the praise in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We certainly do uh, praise God for those words of prayer, and we uh, are hoping that everyone had an opportunity to enjoy the Thanksgiving season, and as we are moving uh, toward the celebration of the birth of Christ, uh, I hope that in this season we would keep that in mind. Sometimes it gets lost in, in uh, the season of merchandise, but let us remember uh, that Christ our Savior was born. And we know uh, through the scriptures and we know uh, through the word of the Lord that, that uh, December 25th uh, was not the actual birth of Christ, but it's been set out and chosen for us to celebrate his birth. It's a good day every day to celebrate Jesus, but let us uh, draw near, let us draw closer because it, it gains attention, it gains focus on the world, on the world, it gains focus on the world to celebrate a Savior. Uh, in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter number 9, it says, Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Bible goes on to say the government shall be upon his shoulders. And we know that he shall reign forever. 
So it's always a good day and always a good time to praise and to worship the Lord. So let us draw nigh to him. Let us draw nigh to him who has loved us and gave us all that we need. So I want to turn your attention on this evening uh, to especially the uh, book of Timothy. Timothy chapter number two, Second Timothy chapter number two. And I want to say as part way to an, an introduction to this particular uh, chapter and to this particular Bible study uh, is that Paul himself was in the midst of writing to Timothy uh, during the end of his ministry. And this would be equivalent uh, to what Jesus wrote in St. John, starting with John 14, 15, 16, and 17, wherein you have the last words of Jesus and the last admonishments and the encouragements that he is giving to his disciples or to his apostles and to his followers to encourage them, to inspire them as he was going to ascend, as he was going to die on the cross for our sins, as he was going to take the next level. So as, as with Jesus in those particular words in those particular chapters where he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Paul, in this particular part of uh, 2 Timothy, is uh, talking to his followers, and especially to Timothy, because in the fourth chapter he says, I fought a good fight, I kept the faith, and henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And he said, not only to me, but to all those that love his appearing. So Paul is, is giving encouraging words. And the reason why I bring this up is the fact that um, we ought to pay attention to the last words of anyone, especially um, those that are of the household of faith especially those that walk by faith and not by sight. And Paul, his mission, his assignment was to the Gentiles um, so, that, so that we might receive a word from the Lord. So in this particular book, uh, 2 Timothy uh, chapter number 2 and verse number 1, it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And uh, we want to talk to you tonight uh, about being strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. But my subject is uh, do not be entangled. Don't be entangled with this world. Don't be entangled with this world. And for us to truly get a grand understanding, a grand understanding about what Paul is saying in that first verse, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1, he said, Thou therefore, that word therefore means that it's connecting, it's connecting the first chapter. Uh, that word therefore is a continuation of, of the first chapter. And in that first chapter, Paul is really encouraging Timothy uh, to be strong, to be strong. And uh, he was encouraging him in that first chapter to be strong uh, by stirring up the gift, stirring up the gift that God has given to you. And what he was saying was, in order for you to be strong, Timothy, uh, and not sluggish, you, you have to maintain a level of spirituality. You have to maintain what I call uh, spiritual hygiene. And that spiritual hygiene is, just simply means that you have to continue your connection with God through fasting, through prayer. Uh, through through prayer in the spirit, through prayer in the anointing, 
and the reading of the Word of God. You got to stir it up, stir up the anointing. Don't allow yourself to become sluggish. Don't allow yourself to become lazy. When it comes down to working in the Lord or doing the Lord's work, uh, one not, must not be lazy. One must not be sluggish. You have to continue with a mindset to move forward in God, a mindset to continue to seek after God and not be sluggish and not be a lazy individual. So that's what Paul was telling him, to stir up the gift. Uh, keep, your, keep your anointing flowing. Keep the Spirit of God alive in your life. And then he was telling him in, to be a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. And that's verse number 8. And there he said, uh, don't allow yourself, don't allow yourself to, to not to be a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. That anybody that live uh, or is going to follow after Jesus are going to suffer persecution. Anybody that's walking after the Lord, they're going to suffer some problems. They're going to suffer some pain. They're going to go through uh, some up times and they're going to go through some hard times. So Paul is telling them, uh, 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 you know, be a partaker of that. Uh, walk with the Lord. Walk with the Lord. Be a partakers of his affliction. And and he kept telling Timothy and reminding him of the fact that, you know, don't be ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ. And what did he mean by that? But, well, if you think about it, Jesus, uh, he died a shameful death, if you'll allow me to say it. He was crucified. He was bruised. He suffered for the sins of the world. And uh, he suffered uh, without the gate. Uh, he had no form, no comeliness. And there was no beauty um, that they would desire him. So, so his death in and of itself uh, to a person looking on the outside, they would uh, uh, look at Jesus as a malefactor, look at Jesus as he died among the thieves, he died among the robbers. So Paul is saying, don't be ashamed of that testimony. Don't be ashamed of that uh, 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 testimony of Jesus. And then... He told them that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power of love and a sound mind. He was encouraging Timothy to be strong and realizing that God has not given us uh, a spirit of fear. So we don't allow uh, a fear to, to paralyze us so that it stops us from moving forward. It stops us from doing what God has called us and ordained us to do. And that leads me to the next encouragement that he was giving him, that, that um, God gave us a purpose. If you were to go to 1 Timothy uh, 1 and 9, it would talk about God has given us a purpose. And that's what Paul uh, was encouraging Timothy to focus on, the, the purpose that God has given him. And that's what we ought to all focus on. Without a vision, the people perish. And that vision uh, simply means uh, the focus or the, the reason why God has called you into the body of Christ. Uh, if you look at that word called out, we are the ecclesia. We have been called out of the world to serve the Lord. And, and God has given us all assignments. And Paul is encouraging Timothy uh, to focus in on your assignment. And, and specifically, Timothy's assignment was to ordain ministers uh, for the body of Christ and to teach them uh, on, on ministry, not, not through his own ordeal or through his own words or through his own experiences, but to teach them according to how Paul the apostle had taught him. And, and as we get ready to move forward, he's telling him to hand down what he has received unto faithful people. 
And he's encouraging Timothy uh, uh, to reprove, to, to, to be strong, and to maintain your level of holiness and righteousness, and don't give in to the whims of the devil. Don't give in to weakness. And, and the way he was encouraging Timothy not to give in to weakness was to strengthen his relationship with the Lord. And uh, that moves on to the next thing, and he was telling him that be committed, be committed uh, to the Holy Ghost, be committed to the church, be committed to the body of Christ, be committed to the Lord, be committed to our God, be committed to the being faithful to the saints of God, be committed to be faithful to the, those that are in need, those that need help. And uh, uh, that comes with a great price, that when you're committed to the things of the Lord, it comes with a sacrifice. It comes with a sacrifice that not everybody is willing to pay. Um, only those that are, are serious about their walk with the Lord are willing to pay the ultimate sacrifice. Those that are serious about uh, their, 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 their duties and their responsibilities, they are the ones that are going to be willing to be faithful unto death. Hallelujah. And that's what Paul was telling Timothy. I need you to be faithful. I need you to be faithful and stir up the gift and, and keep in mind all those things that God has given you, the responsibility that has been laid upon your shoulders. Uh, don't take these things lightly. And that, that brings me uh, to my very first point, that, that a lot of people uh, in this day and age, if they're not careful, if they're not careful, can take uh, the church too lightly, can take uh, their calling and election too lightly. They, uh, it takes a, a, a person that uh, is really uh, having in their minds that really want to serve God and really want to walk with God. It, it takes a different breed, a different breed of a person other than a person that is just simply a fly by night or simply a person that, that, that well, uh, uh, take it how it comes or a person that uh, well, I can take it or leave it, or a person wherein if the going gets tough, if it gets too hard, uh, they'll throw in the towel, uh, be a double-minded person that is unstable in all their ways. And that's not the kind of person that God wants us to be. He doesn't want us to be a double-minded person, unstable in all our ways, and, and not being committed to the things that be of God. God wants us to be committed, to be faithful, uh, to trust in him with all our heart and not lean to our own understanding, but to acknowledge him in all of our ways. And that's what Paul was talking about when he said, Thou therefore, uh, my son. And we're in Timothy chapter number two, uh, uh, second Timothy chapter number two and verse number one. And that therefore, uh, when he says, therefore, my son, notice what he says, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. And that word there, uh, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ, he's literally telling him, don't be strong in your own might. Don't be strong in your own power. Because if you uh, seek to be strong in your own might or you seek to be strong in your own power, you will certainly fail. You'll certainly fall by the wayside. Uh, I'm reminded of, of Peter. Peter, uh, when he told Jesus uh, that he would rather die than to deny him. And y'all know that story very well, like I know that story, that that when, when the chips were down and it came time for Peter to prove his statement, uh, the Bible says he denied him. And uh, he denied him. 
And not only once, but he denied him three times before the cock crowed. And Jesus told him that he was going to deny him. And But Peter, in that moment, when he told Jesus that uh, I'm going to, I'd rather die with thee than forsake thee, uh, Peter was saying that because he was strong in his own might. He wasn't strong in the Lord. And that's why he failed. Uh, that's my point. That's why he failed. That he was, he was claiming to be strong, but he was strong in his own might, and he was not strong in the Lord. And that's what Paul is saying. Be empowered by the grace that is in Jesus Christ. Y'all remember uh, when Paul had a thorn in the flesh, and uh, he sought the Lord three times to remove that thorn in his flesh. And Jesus responded to him and said, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. And the reason why Paul was seeking God to, to, to remove that thorn, because Paul thought that that thorn in his flesh would hinder his ministry, would, would stop him from advancing the kingdom. He thought that that thorn in the flesh would, would cause him not to finish his course or to finish the race which he had set out to do. Uh, but because he received the word from the Lord, the word from the Lord said that my grace is sufficient. Uh, when God uh, gives his grace to us through Jesus Christ, it's more than enough. It's sufficient enough to take us through every test, through every trial, through every hard thing, through every uh, 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 thing that would uh, literally come our way to start to try to stop us from moving forward. And I want you to just go with me, hold that in 1 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy chapter uh, number 2 and verse 1. Hold that and just go with me over to uh, St. John. St. John chapter number 1 and drop down then to verse 17 because this is very important. This is very important if you're going to uh, 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 understand the grace of God. If you're going to understand that uh, the, uh, where your grace comes from. <laughs> Hallelujah. My God. And the grace that comes from Jesus is sufficient. Hallelujah. Meaning that it's more than enough. It has the ability to give you what you need so that you can endure whatever comes your way. And, and he says it here, uh, first, uh, um, John chapter number 1 and verse 17. Notice, it says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth comes by Jesus Christ. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth comes by who? Jesus Christ. So, so I brought you to that scripture so that you can know where grace comes from. Amen? Grace comes from Jesus. It comes from him. And, 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 and the Bible says the grace of God has appeared unto all men. And that's, that's Jesus. Teaching us. He taught us. He taught us the way of truth. Amen. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly and righteously down here in this present world. So the grace that comes from Jesus gives you the power and the ability to live righteously. To live soberly down here in this present world. And, and he gives you that grace and it comes by way of his truth. Amen? So, so that's very important to know where your grace comes from. And let's go back over then. Let's go back over to the book of uh, 1 Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 1. It says, there, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong.
be strong because he's telling him to be strong because of his work, because of the purpose by which God has called him. Uh, what this Bible study is about tonight is for us to be strong in the Lord because of the work and the, the calling that God has on our life, the purpose by which he has called us, by the, the reason for which he has called us, the purpose for which he has called us. And if you're going to finish your course, if you're going to finish this race, uh, you have to be strong. And, and I want to say this about being strong. Um, what Paul was literally telling Timothy, or what he was really wanting him to focus in on, is that as, as trials and as temptation and as you focus more on the work, more trials and temptations are going to come to you and the enemy is going to stop you uh, or try to stop you from accomplishing what God has ordained you to do. So therefore, as you walk with the Lord, you need to increase in strength. You need to increase in the anointing. And in order to increase in strength and increase in the anointing, you have to increase your prayer life. You have to increase your study life. You have to increase your uh, uh, communication and contact with the Lord. Uh, what are you saying, uh, Brother Pastor? I'm saying that, that, that um, uh, when, when an individual is a baby, uh, they don't eat as much as a toddler. And a toddler doesn't eat as much as a teenager. And, uh, uh, and as, as, as a person grows, uh, the demand grows. And as you walk with God and your purpose and the plan of God is revealed to you, the demand, uh, that demands more contact with God. It demands more anointing with God. Uh, where much is given, much is required. So, so what Paul is literally saying to Timothy about being strong in the Lord, he was literally telling him to increase, increase your spirituality, uh, increase your anointing, increase your prayer life because of the work God has demanded from you. And that's where a lot of us miss the boat. Uh, you can't uh, 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 me as a pastor. Let's let's use me as a pastor. I can't I can't uh, maintain my pastoral ship on a layman's anointing, if you allow me to say it, on on a person who just comes into the church and 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 may uh, uh, come to Bible study once a week, uh, may come to Bible study once a month, uh, may pray to God. Uh, every other day uh, and continue to work and, and because, because the, 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 the level of fight that the enemy is going to bring is going to be strong. So therefore if you are a pastor you need to have daily contact with the Lord. You need to be praying without ceasing. You need to uh, read and study the word on a constant level. And, and, and like Paul said, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand and withstand the wiles of the devil. But an individual that, that is calling themselves, uh, uh, know that God has ordained them to be a pastor and, and don't put forth the uh, work, don't operate in a pastoral anointing, the enemy is going to take them out. Same way if we look at a minister, same way if we look at a deacon, same way we look at a, a lay person or a person that, that is uh, uh, in the church and is trying to establish themselves and group themselves in the church, 
They need to uh, utilize a level of anointing to be able to stand. Amen? Because if you don't, if you don't build yourself up, that's what Paul is saying. You've got to build yourself up on your most holy faith. If you know that God has a calling on your life and you know that you have a purpose with God and, and everybody should know that because God has given everybody a purpose and a reason for living. And if you're going to do that, your, your level of anointing that's in your life has to meet that level of expectation. And in order for it to meet that level of expectation, you have to build yourself up. You have to stay in contact with God. If you don't, you will be like that house that, that the individual built upon the sand. And when the rain and the storm came, the house fell and great was the fall of it. Why? Because it wasn't built upon that solid rock. It wasn't built upon the foundation. It wasn't built in a way which it could be able to withstand the storm, but to be able to withstand the fight. And that's what Paul is telling Timothy. He's telling Timothy, be strong in the Lord so that you'll be able to withstand the fight Hallelujah, that the enemy is bringing your way. And the, 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 the closer you, you get to God, the more determined you are, the more you, you, you walk with God and the more determined you are to accomplish what God has called you to do, the greater the intensity of your dedication should be. And that's what a lot of people miss out. They miss out on dedication. Uh, I know that uh, this coronavirus and uh, this pandemic has, has, has shook some things up, but it should never, no, no, never shake an individual up where they say, I'm drawing back from the Lord. Uh, uh, I don't, I don't, I, um, um, uh, they could go everywhere else, but they can't come to the household of faith. Uh, why? Because they think COVID is here. COVID is everywhere. Amen. And you take the necessary precautions to keep yourself. Hallelujah. But, 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 but people think that, 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 uh, well, uh, if you're not dedicated to it, uh, if you're not, uh, have your mind made up that, that I'm going to serve God, that, that, uh, uh, if, if you're going to walk with God, uh, Jesus said, he said it like this, that, if you're going to be my servant, uh, my servant is one that, that don't seek to save his life, but he seeks to lose his life. And that individual is the one that's going to save his life. So what do you mean, Brother Pastor? That, that, that we've called to hazard ourselves. <laughs> uh, we're called to, to give a sacrifice. And, and I want to say this. Uh, service without suffering is not God's way. If you're going to serve him, you're going to suffer. You're going to go through some things. Now, I'm not saying uh, be uh, careless and, and I'm covered under the blood and, and I'm careless with my life. No, my, God is not telling us to tempt him. But my point is this. I don't want people to miss out on my point. My point is this is that when trouble comes, people throw in the towel. People give up. People stop moving forward. It, it puts up a roadblock, and then they like, well, because the trouble is here, uh, I can't go no further. I, 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 there's no sense in me continuing on. And, and they throw in the towel. That's not the way of God. That's not the way of God. When, when the Bible says God has not given us, the spirit of fear. Hallelujah. We're not, uh, we not supposed to allow fear to operate in our lives to paralyze us. And the reason why a lot of people allow fear, allow tests and trials, allow uh, problems in life to overtake them is because they haven't been building themselves up. They haven't been 
uh, doing the necessary things to, to get themselves strong in the Lord so they can endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If, if, if you don't build up your immune system, uh, 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 deadly diseases can overtake you. If you don't build up your spiritual immune system, the enemy can overtake you. Hallelujah. So, so what am I saying? I'm saying that if you're going to walk with God, hallelujah, if you're going to uh, finish the course, if you're going to be strong in the Lord, you have to do the things that are necessary to get you there. Hallelujah. According to how God has called you, God has anointed you. And you ought to be giving yourself to the Lord so that you can walk in that anointing. So that you can walk in that power. So that you can walk in the love that God has given unto you. Hallelujah. My God. Thank you, Jesus. And, and that brings us then now to verse number two. Paul says, <laughs> Paul says, And that the things which thou hast heard among me, uh, among, uh, heard of me among many witnesses. Notice what he said. The same uh, commit thou to faithful men who, who uh, shall be able to teach others. So we look at Timothy. Timothy, his calling. Timothy was called uh, to ordain ministers, a bishop in the church of the Lord. He was, a, he was called uh, to uh, teach others. Uh, he was called to uh, commit uh, what God has given to him to faithful men. And y'all know that uh, people can be stiff-necked. People can be rebellious. People can be uh, heartless. People uh, can be non-supportive. And, and what Paul was telling him was, you know, Although all of these things are going to happen, don't uh, neglect your duties. Don't neglect your responsibilities. And I can say that to the church. Amen? That, that, that uh, uh, walking with Jesus is not always going to be easy. There's, and to walk in your assignment, you're going to come up against opposition. But you cannot neglect your duties. You cannot neglect your responsibilities. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people, even using this pandemic as 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 a, a way of uh, uh, an example, that that people uh, say that well, uh, your employer would say that well, if you don't come to work, we gonna fire you. They say, well, the pandemic is out there. I may get COVID. But don't you know they'll show up to work uh, to carry out their duties, to carry out their responsibilities. Amen? Why? Because they see that as their livelihood. They, see that as, uh, they weigh the risk and they, they believe that, well, if I don't go, I'll lose out on my house. I'll lose out on my car. I'll, I won't be able to, to supply my food and all of this and all of that. Why? Thank you, Lord. And, and, and people who think like that, um, they're willing to make that sacrifice. And people have to realize and understand that, that the same, the same vein, in even a greater vein, you should be willing to make that more sacrifice for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You should be willing. Thank you, Lord, to make the sacrifice for the Lord and not lose out on uh, stop uh, operating and fulfilling your responsibilities and duties unto him. And in order to do that, you've got to be strong. You've got to do the necessary things to build yourself up or, or you'll fall by the wayside. Hallelujah. My God. My God. My God. So we see you then. He says to, uh, in that third verse, and he said, Thou therefore, notice what he says, endure hardness. <laughs> As a what? A good soldier of who? Jesus Christ. So he's telling him, uh, 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 have you some spiritual boldness 
in the Lord to do great exploits. Amen? Endure hardness. That means uh, uh, suffer through some things. When you come up against a problem, when you come up against a, a wall, when you come up against adversity, uh, you don't allow that adversity to cause you to throw in the towel. You don't allow that adversity to cause you to give up. Uh, you, you endure it. And as you're enduring it, God will make a way of escape. If you endure it, God will give you the ability to overcome it. But if you, every time that uh, 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 somebody talked about me, oh, I can't go to church. Somebody did this or that to me. Ah, uh, well, you know, uh, I, I got to get them back. You know, can't, can't fulfill the scriptures. Uh, every time uh, you see something provocative uh, on the screen or, or you see something uh, evil or provocative uh, uh, on Facebook or wherever, uh, you got to go commit fornication. You got to give in to uh, all of that. Anytime somebody uh, 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 say the wrong thing to you, you get angry and, and, and want to go home and give up. Uh, that's not enduring. And the reason why people aren't able to endure that is because they haven't built themselves up for that. Uh, and that, that goes back to my main point. Uh, and if you're going to walk with God in, in your calling and in your election, you've got to make it sure. And in order to make it sure, you have to increase. Increase your prayer life. As you get older, you should be increasing your prayer life. As you get older, you should be increasing in wisdom and knowledge in the scriptures. You should be studying the scriptures more now than you were five years ago. Uh, you should be praying more now than you were a year ago. Hallelujah. You should be increasing, uh, not decreasing. Uh, the, your level of, of, of relationship with the Lord, you should be increasing your level of relationship with the Lord. If you have been giving, you should be giving more now than you were five years ago or a year ago. Hallelujah. Because God is a God of increase. Uh, God is a God of abundance. Hallelujah. My God. And, and as you walk with God, uh, you should be increasing. Uh, you should be growing in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So those that don't endure, they haven't done these things. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said, therefore, uh, endure hardness. Uh, don't, uh, because of the assignment, so I'm talking about Pete, uh, Timothy now, because of the assignment that Timothy had, hallelujah, he was dealing, was going to raise up ministers. He was going to raise up uh, uh, bishops. He was going to raise up elders. So you know that the enemy was going to fight him the hardest because they were going to be leaders of the church. Hallelujah. When, when, you, when you are in a position of leadership and you are in a position of, of raising people up, to inspiring others, to making disciples, you're going to be attacked. Uh, you're going to, you can't lose sight that you're not in a spiritual warfare. And the enemy doesn't play fair, and he's going to try to take you out at every way that he can. That's why you've got to continue to build yourself up. Hallelujah. Build yourself up. Uh, put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And having done all to stand, he says, stand therefore. Now, the, what gives you the ability to stand are muscles. What gives you the ability to stand spiritually are spiritual muscles. Hallelujah. That need to be built up. Hallelujah. So that you can endure the hardness. Notice, notice what he says. And I like this. Hallelujah. He says, Thou therefore endure hardness. He says, Endure it as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now notice what he said there. As a good soldier. 
So you got bad soldiers that will uh, go AWOL. <laughs> My God, who am I talking to today? Uh, uh, go AWOL. Just, just, just leave. Uh, my God. And those people that just leave, they get court martialed. Amen. They be brought before the tribunal. Uh, there's people that, that join the church and, and could, uh, say that they're going to be the Lord's army. Uh, they endure for a moment and then they just leave. They don't show up. Uh, that's Abel. That's not a good soldier. Uh, hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. My God. Now notice. He said, be a good soldier. A good soldier is somebody that's dedicated. Somebody that studies the art of war. A good soldier. Somebody that is ready to fight at a moment's notice. Uh, a good soldier is a soldier that protects uh, not only uh, the commander, but protects their fellow officers or protects, protects their fellow soldiers. Amen? Hallelujah. They're disciplined. Uh, a good soldier is disciplined. They get up early in the morning and exercise. They, 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 they eat right. They talk right. They, they present right. They're disciplined. Amen. They don't, they don't allow every and anything to come into their life. Why? Because it can impair their ability to be a good soldier. Wow. I just said a mouthful. A good soldier uh, that are in, in the body of Christ, you don't allow every and anything to come into your life. Amen? That, that can hinder you. That can stop you from being a good soldier. Amen? Hallelujah. So we see here then. He said, be a good soldier of who? Jesus Christ. Because we are in the Lord's army. Notice then. Uh, that next verse, verse number four, he says, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. And that scripture there is huge because what Paul is, is focusing in on, notice, he's focusing in on somebody that's in the military. Somebody that's, 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 has dedicated their life to being in the military. And a person that is in the military, they don't operate or get involved in civilian things. They get involved in and operate only in military things. And that's what Paul is saying. Uh, you've got to figure out your allegiance. Whether or not your allegiance is to Jesus Christ or your allegiance is to the world. And that, and that word there, entanglement, is, is like uh, uh, a snake that is uh, wrapped around a pole. A, a snake that is wrapped around a tree uh, being entangled. And that snake that wraps its stuff around, oh, well, let me go this way. You got a snake that's called a bow constrictor. That 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 how it uh, gets its prey is that it catches it and then it wraps itself around it to smother it, to kill it. Uh, and this is that same word entanglement. If 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 you're going to serve the Lord, you have to be with the Lord. If you're trying to serve the Lord and be a part of the world and live like the world. It's going to choke you. It's going to smother you and take you out. That's like what Jesus said, uh, the seed that was sown among the thorns. Uh, it sprouted up, but those, those thorns choked the word so that it would not be prosperous, so it could not be fruitful. Amen? So that's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, uh, if you're going to be a soldier in God's army. He says, no man in tank, no man that warreth. There it is, that word warreth. That means that, that fights. If you're going to walk with God, you've got to see yourself in a spiritual battle all the time. You've got to see yourself and conduct yourself 
as a warrior and as a soldier all the time. He said, no man that war in, uh, that's fighting against the enemy, that's fighting against the devil, hallelujah, that's fighting against evil, that's, that's uh, 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 trying to progress the kingdom of God, trying to manifest God's kingdom, that, that's trying to execute and discharge their duties and responsibilities, well, that's, that's being in warfare. Hallelujah. That's being in warfare. He said, no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of the world. And that word there, affairs, means the business of the world. Uh, in other words, you've got to be able uh, not to allow uh, this world to be your priority. Literally what he's saying, and I'm hoping y'all are uh, spiritually minded uh, to, to, to really receive what I'm saying here. And what he's saying here is, is that uh, in the world, you may have a calling. In the world, you may have some gifts. In the world, you may have some plans. But, but he's saying that when it comes down to you being in God's uh, army, you've got to drop your plans. You've got to drop your assignment in the world uh, and pick up the spiritual assignment that God has given you and go after that. Uh, a lot of people can't receive that. A lot of people uh, would struggle with that. Hallelujah. Uh, but that's what Paul is saying, that, that, that as far as occupation goes and, and, and your, your own dreams and your own goals, uh, uh, people... Uh, that aren't caught up and tied up with Jesus and realize that what God has for you is greater. What God has for you is better. Hallelujah. Uh, and what you can even imagine for yourself. They can't receive what I'm saying because it sounds like foolishness to them. But those that uh, realize that they've been bought with a price, those that have, have, have sold out and said, I'll follow after Jesus, those that uh, 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 that are determined in their heart to love God with all their might, with all thy strength, with all their heart, with all their soul, and to love their neighbor as their self. They, they are the ones that are, are, are really committed unto him. Paul said it this way. He said, he said what shall separate us? Uh, what will we allow to separate us from the love of God, hallelujah, which is in Christ Jesus? He said, famine, nakedness, or sword, or peril. Huh? He said, nay, in all these things, we are what? More than conquerors. And this is the mindset that uh, a, a soldier, uh, one that's in the army of the Lord, has to develop. Because if you don't develop this type of mindset, everything in the world will be competing with, with, with God, with you. In other words... If your bank account gets low, you say, instead of going to God, you say, I got to get another job. And while you get another job, that'll take you more out of the church. That'll cause you to stop reading more of the word of God. It'll wear on your body, make you tired. Huh? And, and then the enemy can slip in huh? and get you at a time of temptation and get you to backslide. Uh, hallelujah, out of God's holy church. But those that are, are warriors, those that are building themselves up, and, and God knows what the things that you have need of, hallelujah, he told you to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. So, so a warrior, when, when, when supplies get low, they seek after God. Uh, when a warrior, the, the way gets hard, they don't, they don't throw in the towel and try to do it their way. They dig deeper in Christ. Huh? They trust more in the Lord. Why? Because they've been building themselves up. Hallelujah. They realize through wisdom and knowledge that, that, that God has given unto them that, 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 that God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. And they, as they build themselves up, they're able to endure the hardness until the blessing comes. Hallelujah. There's a difference. 
Thank you, Jesus. There's a difference. Hallelujah. There's a difference. And we've got to realize the difference. And if you're going to war in this warfare, uh, if you're going to go after the purpose that God has called you for, if you're going to live out your calling in your election, then you have to uh, not be entangled uh, with the affairs of this world. You can't allow yourself to allow the world to choke uh, uh, righteousness out of you, uh, to choke uh, uh, living right out of you. Hallelujah, my God. So let me move on. So we see here then, he says, no man, verse number four, no man that warreth entangled himself with the affairs of this life. So, 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 notice. The things of this world to wrap around you, uh, 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 that you become one with it to choke you out. Uh, some people, those that are entangled with the world, their priority is uh, uh, their worldly events or their worldly activity before God. Hallelujah. Before God. They put all that before God. God said that you should not have any other God before me. Hallelujah. And whatever I put before God, that becomes my God. Hallelujah. And, and, and that's what Paul is saying. Don't allow these things, hallelujah, the, the world, the world affairs, your, your occupation, uh, to take you out of the will of God. Some people, they grabbing up all the overtime they can get and not realizing that that's a trick of the enemy. Uh, to keep you away from your family, uh, to keep you away from the church, to keep you from, from studying, to keep you from, from carrying out your assignment with God. Hallelujah. We've got to be careful. The Bible says we've got to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Hallelujah. So we see here. Notice what he says. And I'm doing this. Notice the part B of that verse. That he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Now, we endure uh, the hardness, we, 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 we war and not allow ourselves to be entangled with the affairs of this world so that we can please our commander, so that we can please Jesus, uh, the one who has called us to be a soldier, the one who has enlisted us in his army. Everything that we do should be geared toward pleasing the Lord. Uh, the scripture uh, bears that out in that Shema prayer. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Notice, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Amen? And, and if I love him like that, with my all, all is the operative word like that. I will seek to please him in everything because he's the head of my life. Amen? We have to realize that the Lord is the head of my life. When people, when people say that to me, uh, I want to give honor to God who's the head of my life, you know, uh, I always pause uh, because I know what that means. Uh, whether or not you're submitted to him in all your ways. <laughs> Are you submitted to him in everything? Uh, if he's the head of your life, he's the head of your finances, he's the head of your children, your, your family, your wife, uh, he's the head of your job, uh, he's the head of the church, uh, he's the head of everything. Uh, not, not some things. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Some people say he's the head, but they control some things. And they don't allow the Lord to control it. Uh, so there's a big difference. And that's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying that if you're going to war in this warfare, every move you make should be to please Jesus, who has called you to be a soldier. Now notice what he said. We're almost finished. Going, dropping down to the next verse. He said, and if a man also strives for the masteries, Yet he is not crowned 
except he strive lawfully. So Paul now is moving from a soldier to a runner, uh, one that is in a race. And he's, he's saying that if you're going to uh, strive to get the crown, if you're going to race to, to get the gold, if you're going to go after the prize, uh, then you have to do it. Notice what he said. He is not crowned except he strive lawfully. And, and that connotation there means that, that uh, lawfully means that you have to obey God's laws. You have to obey God's word, the law of the Lord. And you cannot win this race, you cannot get crowned except you do it God's way. Except you do it according to the word of the Lord. That's lawfully. Um, uh, lawfully. The, Bi the Bible teaches that you can't have uh, sexual relations except you have a marriage license. Except your relationship be viewed uh, legal under law. And that's, that's, that's the way it is. You can't uh, uh, advance yourself in God except you do it lawfully. You can't, your marriage can't be recognized except it was performed in a lawful way. Your deeds that you think that you do uh, to uh, promote the kingdom of God won't be recognized by God except you do it lawfully, uh, except you do it God's way. Jesus said it this way. He said, in the end, people are going to say, Lord, uh, we prophesied in your name. Uh, Lord, we gave in your name. We healed in your name. We preached in your name. But Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, what? Ye worker of iniquity. Why? Because they didn't do it his way. Amen? They didn't do it his way. Uh, if you look at driving, you got people around here uh, driving without a license, driving with an expired license, you know, and they by the police. They should the police. And if you put it often enough, you should go to jail. Amen? Why? Because you driving lawfully. Amen? Same way. Same way with your walk with the Lord. That if you're going to be recognized by God, if you want God to, to reward you uh, for your good works, if you want God to, to, to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter ye into the uh, uh, joy of the Lord, you have to do it His way. Hallelujah. You have to do it his way. That's what Paul meant when he said that, and if a man strive lawfully for the masteries, he is not yet crowned except he strive lawfully. Amen. You won't receive this crown, hallelujah, the crown of life, except you do it God's way. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now notice then, uh, the next analogy he gives, he says, verse number six, uh, the husbandman lay, that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. He's talking about a gardener. Now, that word husband there man, means uh, one who plants a field, one who plants a garden, uh, that labors over it, that works over it. And what he's saying there is he that uh, works over the work of the Lord, the one that laboreth. <laughs> My God, you got to put forth some work. The one that laboreth must be first partakers of the fruit. In other words, those that labor in God's kingdom, they will receive a reward. They will receive a blessing. Amen? They will receive a blessing from the Lord. The Lord, he knows uh, your way of the righteous. And he says, the way of the ungodly shall perish, but the way of the righteous is blessed. Amen? And that's what the Lord is saying, that if you work 
if you put forth the labor, if, if you be a good soldier, if you fight the good fight, uh, if you be dedicated, hallelujah, God is going to reward you. Hallelujah, God is going to bless you. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And if you sow uh, uh, to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. But if you sow through the spirit, you shall reap everlasting life. Hallelujah. So you've got to realize that, uh, that I'm working. Uh, that I'm working and I'm giving myself. Now, notice, I'm not talking about you're working for salvation. Uh, because salvation is free. Amen. Salvation comes through faith. Hallelujah. But once you are saved, uh, in order for you not to lose your salvation, you have to put forth uh, and be obedient to the word of God. You have to live according to God's word. That's why he empowers you. That's why he calls you to be a soldier. That's why he tells you to endure hardness. Hallelujah. Why? So, because the enemy is going to attack you. The enemy is going to try to steal, kill, and to destroy you. Hallelujah. But you, if you're going to be strong and not give in to the wiles of the devil, hallelujah, you have to build yourself up. You have to give yourself unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and with this mindset, thank you, Jesus. And, and when I'm talking here, I'm talking to those that are serious about their walk and their, and their lifestyle with the Lord. Because there are people who are serious and there's people who are mid-range serious and there's people that are not serious at all. And the people that are in danger are the people who are mid-range serious and not serious at all. They're, they're subject to lose out. Why are they subject to lose out? Because they won't do the things that are necessary uh, to be strong in the Lord. But those that are serious, they're willing to pay the ultimate price. Hallelujah. You've got to be willing to give up everything and pay the ultimate price to walk with Jesus. Now, let me say this because some people will say, well, um, uh, what you're talking about, um, uh, I, can't, I can't have any fun. I, I, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Thank you, Lord. That's not what I'm saying. Hallelujah. What I'm saying is, is a person that is in tune with the Lord, they won't allow worldly flesh and worldly desires and the sins of this world to take them out. Hallelujah. And that's, that's what you've got to guard yourself from. You've got to guard yourself from not completing and finishing what God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That means loving your children. That means loving your brother and sister. That means showing mercy. That means helping those that can't help themselves. That means giving praise and worship unto God. That means being faithful uh, to your leader. Uh, to your church. Hallelujah. That means being faithful to your husband, to your wife. That means, hallelujah, being, 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 uh, honoring your mother and your father. Hallelujah. Now, what's wrong with that? <laughs> hallelujah. What's wrong with that? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And, and not, not being faithful to your flesh and not being faithful to the devil. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. And in order to not to do those things, to be faithful to the devil, being faithful to your flesh, being faithful to your own desires, you have to be strong in the Lord uh, and in the power of his might. Uh, it, makes, it makes a difference. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And not, and not everybody, not everybody are going to uh, uh, hear what I'm saying and receive it. Why do I say that? Because Jesus taught us, Jesus taught us that broad is the way uh, and wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction and many there be that go in there at. But straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. Hallelujah. And few uh, go in there at. He said many are called, but just a few are chosen. 
Are you one of the chosen few? Uh, hallelujah, my God. And, 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 and those that realize that they are the chosen few, they realize and understand that what God has for you is greater uh, than what you can have for yourself. Uh, you realize that 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 uh, what God has 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 for me, uh, but God has for me is more than I can have for myself. Hallelujah! Uh, that you realize that what God has called you to. Hey, hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. You realize that your calling is the highest calling a man or a woman can see. It's a great honor uh, to serve the true and living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's a great honor to walk with Him. It's a great honor to talk with Him. Hallelujah. It's a great honor to be on the Lord's side. And, and people that don't see it that way, the enemy is able to slip in and to give them a false reality, to give them a false illusion. Hallelujah, because uh, they, because he's a master deceiver. He's a master manipulator. And people that don't walk with God and give their whole life to him, the, the Bible says the enemy has blinded their eyes. Least they should see the glorious light of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So today's subject is uh, don't be entangled. Don't be entangled. With this world. Therefore, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. And do not do not allow the affairs of this world to choke you. Don't allow what's going on in this world, this pandemic, uh, this racial violence, uh, the things that are, are imminent, are threatening your very existence, so you think. Don't allow those things to stop you from uh, carrying out the will of God. To have you to be uh, able to have you not to, to give your all unto God. Hallelujah. Don't allow those things that 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 uh, going on to stop you from uh, your relationship with the Lord. Giving up, throwing your time, getting weak is supposed to be getting stronger in God. As I said earlier, as, as you walk with God and you spend time with God over the years, your prayer life should increase. Your, your study of the scriptures should increase, which increases your wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Uh, your, your, your whole spiritual outlook should increase. You should be able to handle more pressure Hallelujah! Not I get a phone call, or get a text, or uh, and I'm and I'm all I ain't coming to church. I I'm I'm gonna stop talking to people. <laughs> Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. My God, I'm turning my back. Uh, enough is enough. See that that tells me that you that you allowed your immune system to get low. Uh, you allowed yourself to get weak, wherein the enemy was able to slip in. And to take you at his own will. Uh, we've got to be careful. Hallelujah. We've got to be careful. Not to give excuses. To, to what's going on in this world. To stop us from seeking first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. To stop us from giving of our tithes and our offerings. To stop us from loving our brother and our sister. Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's God's word. God's plan will never change. Now, it doesn't change it because uh, uh, there's a pandemic going on. It doesn't change because there's a famine in the land going on. God's word never changes. The word of God says that his word, heaven and earth, shall pass away. But his word, his word shall remain forever. Uh, that means if his word is remaining forever, his will is remaining forever. His assignment for your life will remain forever. Hallelujah, my God. I hope you receive what I'm saying. Thank you, Lord, that, that, that if, if, if I'm broke, 
It doesn't change the fact that God wants me to give. Hallelujah. I have to find a way to give. Huh? Thank you, Lord. If, if opposition is up against me, it doesn't mean that I allow that opposition to overtake me. Hallelujah. If I, I, I got to do it in such a way that I realize in my conclusion here, hallelujah, that, that, that suffering and service go together. And God teaches us through Jesus Christ how to suffer. And we can't suffer with bitterness in our hearts. He tells us to count it all joy. He tells us to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is our reward in heaven. Um, that's why he told Paul, Timothy to endure hardness. Uh, how do you endure hardness? Through praise and worship. Uh, to, through persevering. To adhering to your gifts and your calling. To pray and, and seeking after God. To reading the word. Through carrying out your, your, your daily routine. Um, you're not giving up. Not throwing in the towel just because some obstacles are in your way. Just because uh, some things are trying to block you and stop you. Uh, that's, that's what the, uh, the world says when the going gets tough. The tough can go. Um, and, and, and in my conclusion, I'm trying to conclude. But, but Paul is telling Timothy, if you do these things, uh, if you persevere, uh, hallelujah, greater is he that is in you than it is he that is in the world. And like Paul said, you receive a crown of righteousness uh, which the Lord shall give you at that day. And, and, and when you increase, uh, as your chest and your trials increase, the, the joy increases. Uh, not only does your power increase, but your joy increases. Not only does your joy and power increase, but your faith increases. Um, when you realize that you're under pressure and you begin to, 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 to combat that pressure using your spiritual hygiene, that exercise, that, that, that strengthens your faith, you'll grow, you'll increase in love, you'll increase in faith, you'll increase in strength. Uh, you'll increase in blessing. Hallelujah. Don't, don't let the enemy fool you. Don't let the devil trick you. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Don't let nobody steal your crown. Hallelujah. You've got to build yourself up. Endure. Don't be entangled. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and give God a praise. We certainly thank God. Uh, for the word of God that is going on here on today. We certainly praise God for all that he is doing in our lives. Amen. Truly God is great and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. And as we uh, prepare, I want to say that uh, those that are online with us on today, we want you to prepare your hearts for giving. Amen. And as you prepare yourself for giving, uh, remember that you can bring your tithes and offerings to uh, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508. And you can also uh, mail in uh, your tithes and offerings uh, to 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508. Uh, you can drop them in off in our drop box. And you can also come to tithing. Amen. And give in that way. Uh, just look up Tively, find Christian ministries, and go through that process and give. And as we are standing in our sanctuary, thank you, Lord. Just put a comment in the line. Thank you, Lord, as to uh, what you have received on this day from the Bible study, and we'll certainly pray for you. We'll be praying that God will continue to bless you, and God will continue to strengthen you, and give you what you need. Amen. In this time of need. So we want to ask the church to stand. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And we want to uh, give God glory, honor, and praise as we move forward in our study on today. Let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you.
for your greatness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for having you blessed each and every one of us here on today. We ask you, Lord, that you send forth your anointing, send forth your power. Let this word be received with meekness to the saving of the soul. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you let your most perfect will be done. Bless the church, bless the Bible study. Father, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.